If you guys, um, you're free to turn your cameras on. We love to see y'all, but if you want to turn your cameras off, that's fine. We do ask that y'all stay muted throughout the webinar um, until the Q&A portion when we will turn the recording off and you guys are free to unmute, ask questions. Of course, we're going to go through that chat and see if people had questions in the chat. We'll answer those. Um, and then we're going to give you guys the floor at the end for Q&A so that we can kind of have an open discussion. Um, so again, we are going to record. We're going to have this recording up later. Um, we'll post about where that will be on our social platforms. We also have a blog. So if you guys are, um, if you are unfamiliar with our website or, um, you know, if you're going to go there tonight later and use your coupon, check out our blog. There's some helpful resources on there too. We, we like to try to put as much um, fun information on there and, and helpful information that can help you guys um, have your best experiences in the outdoors. So um, I think that stay muted, leave your camera on off, whatever. Um, so note on Zoom, if you guys are unfamiliar, if you do the um, under view options, if you do side by side, that will uh, give you the full screen of the PowerPoint and kick the our pictures over to the side, which might be a more comfortable way to view this presentation. Um, and once you do that, it'll say gallery view at the top, which is kind of confusing, but it is what it is. So just pro tips for uh, seeing this presentation in its full glory. Um, and again, please feel free to add questions to the chat. We're gonna be checking that um, throughout. And then of course, at the end, when we get to the Q&A. Um, right. so here we go. Welcome. Welcome to Hiking 101, guys. So again, I am Shannon. I head up social media for Whole Earth. I have been working for Whole Earth for a little over 11 years. I came from the Austin stores. I worked on the buying team and I now head up social media. Um, we have this video for you guys of some of our adventures, but it's coming from the cloud. So bear with it. It's a little bit choppy. Um, but yeah, so I'm Shannon and I have a ton of experience hiking um, through the Rocky Mountains specifically, um, the San Juan mountain range is one of our favorite and uh, my husband and I really also enjoy um, going up to Washington, Olympic National Park. Um, and so yeah, we love hiking, we love hiking with our dog. So if anyone has any specific questions about hiking with pets, hiking with dogs, um, I've never hiked with a cat, but I've hiked a lot with my dog, Abby, there. So um, I'm happy to answer any of those questions. Sean? Nice. Okay, uh, awesome. Hi, I'm Sean. I'm the outreach coordinator here at Whole Earth. And I uh, have just uh, done backpacking by myself all over the world. And that was what I really love to do. And these days, I have a two-year-old. And uh, my wife and I always love to go hiking. And we bring our two-year-old, so I've got um, some experience doing it uh, as a much younger man and now as a dad, and I'd love to answer any questions you have about bringing the family along with you because really that's what's uh, my favorite part about hiking right now. So, uh, and I also want to apologize in advance for uh, doing the slides. I'm in charge of going next and forward, so I'm sorry. I hope I don't make us all dizzy. Uh, <laughs> next up is Heather. Hey guys, I'm Heather. I am Shannon's assistant at Whole Earth. Um, I used to work in the stores uh, managing, or not managing, but uh, running the shoe department at one of our locations. So that was definitely my bread and butter and my specialty. And Shannon, Sean, and oh, sorry, Shannon and Sean <laughs> uh, did the footwear buying for a while. So we, we're all kind of from the footwear world and uh, we love talking about that. So. Um, I really like to just get out and do shorter hikes. I'm not much of a distance person, although I do want to get into that. I'm just starting out when it comes to longer trails. So um, I'm, I'm all good with day hikes and short stuff. That's kind of my, my sweet spot. Awesome. Heather, would you mind sending the link to the document again in the, in the chat? Uh, the yeah. outline? Yes. Okay, yeah. Thank you. There's just so much to talk about and we are excited to uh, try and fit it all in in the next uh, 50 minutes, but bear with us as we hopefully don't glance over your favorite topic, but yeah, drop us a note in the chat. Uh, we want to tell you a little bit about Whole Earth. Yeah, so um, I noticed that a lot of the participants tonight are not all necessarily in Texas, which is really fun. 
Um, and even if you are in Texas, you might not know exactly who we are. Maybe you found us on Eventbrite. Um, but Whole Earth was founded in Austin, Texas, actually, almost 50 years ago. It'll be 50 years in December. We'll be celebrating our birthday on the 14th of December. And um, since the beginning, since the 70s, we have really focused on outdoor experiences, lightweight outdoor gear. Um, back in the day, in terms of camping and, and hiking gear, most people bought that stuff from Navy and Army surplus stores. So um, Whole Earth was one of the first stores that carried, uh, you know, lightweight, advanced technical gear um, that wasn't an Ar Army or Navy surplus. Um, we kind of started off as like a bookstore and a novelty store. Our store is based off of the Whole Earth catalog. So if you're familiar with that publication from the late 60s, um, it also inspired Steve Jobs to create Apple. So it's a super interesting catalog that is based on independent learning and having experiences and in the outdoors and, and basically using your hands to do things, DIY stuff. So um, our store was kind of founded on those principles and we've always carried stuff that hopefully um, accentuates any experiences you want to have, whether they're outdoors, which is a huge focus of our business, um, or even indoors in your backyard if you want to do science kits with your kids or if you want a pair of vast hiking boots to go do the PCT. Like we have a little bit of everything for everybody. So um, it's a really fun um, experience if you're able to actually physically go into one of our stores. They are open right now. Um, we are doing limited capacity. We are asking our uh, customers and staff to wear masks for everyone's safety. Um, we do have sanitization in um, protocols in place. Uh, we have sanitizer when you come in the door. We're sanitizing in between uh, transactions. So if you guys do want to head to a store, if there's one near you, which the locations page on our on our website, wholeearthprovision.com, will give you a guide for that. Um, we are in four markets throughout Texas, and um, yeah, we we've got six stores right now, and um, we'd be happy to see you guys. Awesome. Well, we're going to jump right into uh, kind of the the heart of hiking and talk a little bit about about planning. You know, hiking a trip is a serious endeavor, and you want to make sure you're having fun and not worrying about the, the, the details when you're out there. You want to worry about that when you're at home planning your trip. And I really want to build in flexibility when I'm planning a hiking trip. I think that's so important because, you know, you're not really in control of nature. You're just there experiencing it, and that can be a lot of fun. And the more prepared you are, the more fun you're going to have. And the more everyone else is going to have fun and say, let's do that again. That's really what we want. Um, a lot of uh, people are going to talk about uh, two different kinds of hikes. And one is a big loop that you're going to go around in a big loop and kind of end up where you started. And then another type is an out and back trail, you know, so an in, an in and out trail rather. And so that's when you go to one point and you come all the way back the same way you came. And we're going to talk a little bit about some examples of those when we get to the navigation section. Um, but you know, you, what type of trail are you, are you wanting to do? Do you, do you have a specific place in mind? Do you have a distance in mind? Um, you want to make sure that you have maps. You can't count on your phone to deliver GPS to you. So you want to make sure you've printed out maps or if the park has maps available at the kiosk, you know, don't skimp on those things because knowing where you are and knowing your route is so criti critical. Uh, another issue uh, about planning is you want to plan to bring as little or as light as the gear as you can. The less stuff you bring, the faster you're going to walk, the less stress you're going to have on your knees, your ankles, your back, and your hips. And so just lighter is better. Um, that's why a lot of modern outdoor gear is so lightweight and high-tech looking. That's just because they're trying to shave ounces so that you have a better time on your hike and everybody's morale stays, uh, stays high. Um, all right, I think that's what I wanted to talk about there. Oh, in and out loop trails. Here we go. So here is my, one of my favorite parks. This is Pedernales Falls State Park here in the heart of Texas. And I want to draw your attention down to number four, Trammell's Crossing. We're going to drive our car down the road and park over there. And then here's that crossing. And you're going to park probably, I've highlighted in yellow right here by the bathrooms. Always a good idea to park next to the bathroom for when you're leaving and when, you, when you're coming back from the trail. And if you have family, kids, you know that, that's very true. So next we're gonna walk down the red trail and we're gonna go over here and go to this 5.5 mile loop. Now we're not gonna do all of it, or maybe we are. Uh, one thing you'll notice in the circle in red here is your kids will ask you for the Wi-Fi password. 
And that is a very common question that the park rangers get, but it is not a Wi-Fi zone, that is an amphitheater. Imagine if the Boy Scouts or someone was coming to have a lecture or do like a bird show or something like that. Um, so there's no Wi-Fi. Don't, don't bring that kind of stuff out to the park. Uh, but next we're gonna go across Trammell's Crossing, which is pictured up in the top right. And I've never seen it that wet. It's usually a lot drier and you don't need to really wade or swim to get across. But that's something you need to think about. You need to plan. What is my trip looking like? What is my route gonna take me through? I need to be prepared for that. And then when you get to this junction here, you've gone about a three quarters of a mile. You can either go to the right or to the left, right? And so that's where you need to plan your trip. How far does your group wanna hike? Can you go all the way to the top corner of the park and loop all the way around? Well, you need to add up those miles, make sure that's something that you're comfortable with, make sure the whole group is prepared for that kind of trip. And it should be beautiful. This is one of my wife's and I's favorite hikes in Texas. And we like to do it as just kind of a mixed match, make your own circle. So you can see you can create loop trails with in and out uh, options invested in them already. I just wanted to point something out before you click off of the slide, guys. Troy, awesome that you hiked this uh, this past Sunday. Um, but oh, wow. if you are in Texas um, and you pick up one of these maps from your local state park, you will notice on um, the bottom corner of the map that they are sponsored by Whole Earth Provision Company. Um, we do a massive give back campaign every year. Uh, to give back to Texas State Parks to help with conservation, preservation, and a lot of the money that we give back to them, which at this point, I think we're- A quarter of a million dollars. We're a million in the last, I think, 13 years. Um, they use that to print these maps. So go get them. They're there, they're a resource, and they're, you know, you can hang on to them for next time. You can absolutely just stow them in the glove box, whatever. Um, but yeah, so we're, we're proud to partner with them for that. And those maps are free at state parks. You don't have to purchase that. They're just there. Right. Uh, you know, the essentials are really what I was talking about earlier. With shorter hikes, the key is really having good footwear, a good day pack to keep all your stuff in it, and just water. We're going to talk about hydration a lot uh, during this evening's uh, presentation. It's just so critical, no matter where you are, but especially here in Texas, you want to stay, uh, you want to stay really well hydrated. And again, that just really goes to boost up morale for everybody. For longer hikes, you want to have those same kind of essentials, but I would add a more robust first aid kit. I would add a, a more robust lunch, again, to keep everybody active and having fun. And then, you know, you're usually not going to just walk. You know, you're going to have a purpose when you're out there. So what is that purpose? Are you going to fish? Are you going to swim? Are you going to, to bird watch? Are you bringing binoculars? Are you bringing a book to just sit and read? So your purpose, it's really your hike. Hike your hike. Do what you want to do out there and uh, just build that into your planning. I think that's the key uh, to, that, to that picture. That's all Heather's hiking gear. Cool. All right. That brings us to our next point, which is building your gear kit. A lot of people get kind of overwhelmed. Um, we've definitely gotten the feedback that people get overwhelmed in our stores with how much there is to uh, consider and, and go through. And honestly, you don't need much, guys. There's uh, you know, there's always a starting point for everything. And so even if you just went and picked out one item and started with that and then went out on your hike, uh, you know, you're going to find things out and you're going to be able to make a list and come back and say, okay, I need this for next time. Um, so, you know, in terms of what to buy first, um, we can kind of talk through that. Um, and considering the seasons and um, investing in, you know, flexible, high quality layers. Uh, these are all kind of points that we wanted to hit in terms of where you want to, where you want your head to be at when you're thinking about what your initial gear kit is going to look like. It's also super subjective based on uh, where you're going. So like Sean just said, hike your own hike, depending on where you're going, you might not need as many light layers, but you're going to for sure need a good pair of shoes. Um, so that's one of the first things I think we wanted to talk about was uh, proper footwear. Um, there's so many different kinds and in terms of boots, you've got low hikers, you've got, um, you know, water friendly sandals, um, water crossing sandals. So there's a bunch of different options. Um, our footwear departments, we've always specialized in all of these options and our footwear leads and uh, the folks that work in our footwear departments are very uh, well versed in all these different options. Uh, but we cannot stress enough how important it is 
to take care of your feet when you are hiking. Oh yeah, Sean wanted to make sure that we got this coupon in at that point so that you guys know that you got 10 bucks uh, towards whatever you want in the store. Um, here's uh, the first part, or the, I guess the first exposure to this coupon in our um, PowerPoint. It's also on that outline. And then we're gonna have it again at the end. But if you guys wanna take a picture with your phone or whatever, um, however you present it at stores is cool with us, if it's on your phone or whatever. So y'all make sure to utilize those. They're, they're also good online. Um, but yeah, going back to outdoor footwear, um, you know, depending on where you're going, depending on if you're gonna gain elevation, depending on how hot it's gonna be, um, there are a lot of different options for footwear. And it really depends, you know, a lot on your comfort level. If you're not gonna be, on a bunch of loose rock or gaining elevation or um, on sharp rock even, maybe you could be cool with like some Solomon running shoes like we see on Carrie's foot here in the middle slide. Um, if you know you're going out to Perdinalis and you're gonna mostly be in the water all day and you feel cool with tacos being your tacos all day, my husband really likes to hike in his tacos. I do not, it's personal preference. Um, but you know, it's, it's just based on where you're going and your comfort level of how far you're going to be walking. Um, you can always ping us to ask our recommendations or, you know, trial and error it. It also doesn't hurt to bring water crossing sandals wherever you're going, especially if they're lightweight, like Tevas are a great option. If you don't want to, if tacos tend to get too heavy or you don't like the love seat fit to them, Tevas can easily strap onto your pack or on the outside of your pack or even go into your pack and you can use those um, so that you can cross the stream and then not have your feet continue to be wet throughout the hike. But um, proper footwear is so important. Most, if you are gonna be on trails that have loose rock, that you're gaining elevation, that um, you know the terrain is gonna be a little bit rockier than most trails here in Texas, I would definitely recommend something that has a shank in it, um, which any of your light hikers or any of your mid boots are gonna have shanks. Those are gonna protect your feet from getting bruised up from rocks all day long. Um, so I just wanted to say that I know I'm going too far into footwear, but like Heather said, we all come from footwear buying background. So <laughs> we're all really adamant about making sure y'all take care of your feet. Um, so proper footwear, low hikers boots, making well, sure you have, have the right we have a socks. question. We have a question about what a shank is. Can you say what a shank is? Or, or so a like shank is essentially, it's, um, it can be made of a couple different things, but it's essentially like a little piece of plastic um, it used to be metal, sometimes it still is metal, but usually now it's like a, like a plastic um, piece that is built into the midsole of your shoe. So it's, you, it's not, you can't feel it per se, but it essentially creates a rigidity to the forefront of your shoe so that when you're striking the ground, you're not hitting, it's not going directly, the impact is not hitting directly onto your foot and it just protects the meat of your foot from getting bruised. So yeah. it, again, it can be made of different things, but essentially it just, it's protection from rocks is, is the easiest way to say that. Um, but great question. Again, these things, uh, y'all please continue to ask questions because I, I forget that some of the terms that we use all the time are not common for other people. Um, but yeah, so I also wanna say socks too are really important guys. Um, keeping your feet dry, keeping your feet um, in a sock that's not gonna stay wet. So like cotton socks, probably don't wear them. Um, they're going to stay wet for a long time. That also goes for underwear. Um, anything that is merino wool is going to be great. And then there's a lot of blends out there too. So um, we have a huge robust sock collection. Um, that would be a great thing to invest in with that $10 coupon. Um, so yeah, so proper footwear, socks. Um, so the soles of the boots, flexible or rigid, it really again just depends on uh, where you're going. Usually the, uh, the boots, usually the heel will be indicative of whatever that type of shoe is. So if it's like a running shoe, it's going to be a little bit more flexible. If it's, it's a boot, it's going to be a little bit more rigid. So it kind of just depends on where you're going and what you want. Um, and yes, so we'll get back to some more. Yeah, you guys have great comments going here. Um, so the next thing for building your gear kit, so obviously outdoor footwear, we can't recommend that enough as your first big purchase. If you guys are going to buy one thing, buy yourself a good pair of shoes. Um, I think the next slide is day packs. Oh, no. Nope. Well, I guess I'm going to just run through it really fast. Okay, before we get to um, 
the next little portion, I was also going to just mention day packs are a great investment um, beyond shoes. Uh, because if you're going to be out for any amount of time, really, um, in Texas, you're going to need water, you're going to need a couple things. Um, so being able to kind of stow that stuff in a day pack is going to be really important. We're going to talk more about day packs here in a second and talk a little bit more about specifics. Um, but in terms of like that initial gear kit building. Um, and then again, like Sean mentioned, like it's y'all's hikes. So any kind of accessories that you want outside of some good footwear, carrying, you know, a bag that's going to help you out. Um, it's your hike. So, you know, if you know that you get kind of cold, if you're going up an elevation, you want a light, a light layer, go for it. Um, but anything that you get, just make sure you use it in advance. That's our main takeaway from this is you don't want to get out there and literally rip the tags off of it and start using it without having used it at your house. Um, and one thing that Sean brought up that was a really good point is that to test your gear, you don't have to go on a big trip. Like if you want to go buy a pair of, you know, big oboes boots and you're going to, you know, the Cascades or wherever, whatever mountain range, you don't have to go do a big trip before that. You can go down to Town Lake Trail or you can go to whatever your local trail is and just break them in, get them hot, get your feet hot in them and so that they start to mold to you a little bit better. Um, if you have somewhere around that you can gain and lose elevation, again, Texas, it's hard. There are some spots. Um, if you can take a pair of boots or even light hikers, even sandals, in places where you can gain and lose elevation, it's gonna be really good for you to know how that footwear is gonna perform in those kinds of situations, especially if you can take them around water. Um, and again, with like day packs and any, anything that has any kind of functionality or technical ability, going and using that stuff before you get out on the trail and knowing exactly how your, your um, hydration bladder works, exactly how your trekking poles are gonna telescope, exactly how you know, whatever, even if you got a GoPro, exactly how your GoPro works. Um, so that when you get out there, you're not distracted, you know? So we want you guys to go out and have the best time that you can absolutely have. I have all these notes and I'm just talking off the cuff here. I'm not even looking at my notes. Um, but yeah, so like, you know, again, like Sean was saying, planning your trip, um, just know what the weather's gonna be like. If you need layers, if you're going somewhere where it gets cold up at the you know summit and and it's going to be hot to begin with that layering system is going to be really important um we'll talk a little bit more about that at uh the gear uh demo at the end but um it's easier to take clothes off than it is to um be so bundled up or so bare that you can't get one way or another so when you have those light layers and you can peel them off as you go that's going to be a lot more comfortable um, for long-term hikes than, than not having them. Um, so again, checking the weather, knowing, like, checking the weather when you get there, too, because especially us Texans, we know how Texas weather can change by the second, um, but especially if you're going to the mountains, if you're going to any kind of mountain range, uh, it's so different. So making sure you check in the morning, you can check in advance, but definitely check that morning. You might even want to reroute some of, you know, replan some of your, some of your hikes. That's definitely happened to me before where we've had to bust a big hike the day after getting to Colorado versus doing it two days in and while, when we're acclimated because the weather was going to be better. So knowing the weather, considering the seasons, um, you know, and layering, layering systems, super important, testing everything before you go. We just can't emphasize breaking in your shoes enough. That is such a huge one. <laughs> I've heard some horror stories. So yeah, break in your shoes, know what you're gonna wear. Um, and that brings us to this slide here, which Sean, do you wanna tell us who that special boy is on your back? You're on mute, bro. Yeah, that's my son, Charles. Uh, he's about a little bit over a year, and that's a chanted rock here in Texas. And it's a, a huge uh, dome that comes out of the flat, uh, well, it's a hill country, but it's a, it's a huge dome. It's really impressive. It's a batholith, actually, if you uh, are a geology nerd. And that's uh, one of the uh, hiking backpacks that we, that we carry that uh, your kid can ride in up, in up to 40 pounds. So that's a lot of fun. And like I said, I'm always looking for ways to hike with the family. Uh, we're going to go uh, review some different, uh, you know, particulars about hiking, and we're going to start with the uh, next slide here. Reviewing terrain and the conditions and the distance that you're going. 
right? So each time you go out, it's going to be a different experience, even if it's in your local haunt, your, your favorite hiking trail. Um, and so just like Shane was saying, just be prepared for what's going to go on with the weather. Um, be prepared to have a backup plan um, and be prepared to hike in bad weather because it is possible. It's not a game. It doesn't, doesn't ruin your hike, but, you know, you need to be prepared for that to be the case. Um, so I think that's all we wanted to say here. Um, I did want to mention, um, so considering your distance and terrain, again, guys, with uh, the people that are heading out towards uh, mountain ranges, the people that live there who are in this webinar also that live near the mountains, um, y'all might already know this, but for the people that are going to faraway destinations, um, if you are doing hikes that are distance hikes, so anything, it's subjective, but anything, you know, that's going to be longer than three miles out three miles back is usually you know a little bit on the longer side so anything above that if you are going to be going on any summit hikes and you're getting above tree line be really weary about your timing too if you are going to be there um you know in the later afternoon that in this picture here that's actually me and my dog abby um those are definitely storm clouds rolling in and we definitely got caught in a hailstorm that day and that was about noon. So if you're above tree line, just keep in mind that you were exposed. It is much more dangerous. Lightning is a real thing up there. Um, so planning your hikes, if you are gonna be doing longer distance um, around the time of day is really important too and just being wary yeah. of weather systems rolling in. Another tip uh, is to make sure that your pace is pretty consistent. Um, you wanna have, you know, you don't wanna be having to to, to run at the end of the day. So just have a nice even pace and that'll keep everybody fresh and uh, looking forward to the next mile or two. Uh, all right, next we're gonna move over to day pack considerations. All right, so um, if you're out there hiking and you are gonna be gone for you know an extended period of time, uh, you definitely want to bring a day pack to have all of your things with you, whether that's just your first aid kit and your GoPro and your sunscreen and uh, trekking poles, or if you know, you're bringing a lunch or just your water. Um, carrying your water on your back is way more comfortable than just holding a water bottle. So those are, um, this is a, a big section of hiking for a lot of people. Um, main things you wanna consider for packs is gonna be the size and the volume. Um, some day packs are going to come in different torso sizes. So measuring your torso length um, before you buy is really important. Um, there are ways that you can do that at home, but a lot of stores, um, specialty stores like us, we have a device that can help measure your torso to get you fitted for the right pack um, and figure out, you know, if you need a small medium or a medium large. Uh, to fit your torso length. Also, um, packs are going to be measured in liters. So the volume inside of your pack is going to, um, you know, just give you the adequate amount of space. Typical day packs are going to be between 10 and 30 liters, but you could go smaller um, or even bigger if you've got a lot of stuff or just stuff that takes up more space. Just depends on what your hike um, entails and what you want to pack along. Um, hydration bladder compatibility. Uh, so most day packs are going to have a sleeve in the back panel for you to put something like a water bladder. Um, there are packs that come with that bladder included and those are just going to be labeled hydration packs. Um, those are typically uh, a better value. You get the pack plus the hydration bladder versus having to buy them separately. But let's say you like a pack and you want a different type of bladder that's not the one that's included, you can mix and match and they are detachable. So uh, you don't have to be married to that option. And there's definitely packs that don't come with the water bladder at all. And um, that's just helpful to figure out, you know, which, what, you know, what's the best way for you to carry your water. Maybe you don't want to use a hydration bladder at all and you'd rather just use water bottles, then you can just not use that little sleeve in the back. Uh, and then the main other thing when you're shopping for day packs is um, features and functionalities. What's going to work best for you? Do you need a pack that has trekking pole attachments? Do you need a pack that has a helmet lock, exterior pockets, a hip belt, 
adjustable straps? Is there a pack cover included for when it rains? Those are all things that you want to um, maybe think about when you're shopping around for day packs. And there's a lot of different options out there. Um, this on the screen, we've got the Osprey, I think, hike light or daylight and uh, some bags from Cotopaxi as well. Um, great options. Um, I, my favorite packs to hike with are definitely uh, Osprey. All right, next slide. All right, so hydration. As I was just mentioning, uh, you might wanna carry your water different ways. The main things you want to do when you're out for a hike, especially in the summer months and it, or just anywhere that's really, really hot, is pregame before you go on your hike. So basically make sure that you are hydrated and you've been drinking water uh, before you even start to get out to the trail. Um, by the time that you feel that you're thirsty, you're already starting to get dehydrated. So you want to make sure that you are paying attention to your water intake. Uh, a good rule of thumb is to drink one liter of water or about, you know, one Nalgene uh, per active hour. So if you're out there for, you know, four hours, maybe plan to bring four liters of water. Uh, but I guess it kind of depends on the pace that you're at and, you know, but you definitely want to stay hydrated. This will help keep, uh, keep you from being sore the next day. Uh, if you're, say, going out for a longer distance or you're just on um, heavier terrain than you anticipated or just more than you're used to. Maybe it's your very first time out hiking and you're doing something maybe a little rigorous. Uh, you could be sore the next day and that water definitely um, helps keep you comfortable. Um, things you want to consider when you're packing, how much water you're going to you know, take uh, is the time of year, your skill level, and um, how rigorous the trail is. Uh, that time of year really goes into you know, just the weather and you know if it's a really really hot day uh, you probably are going to need some more water than you think so it's it's definitely important to plan that ahead and uh, just make sure that you're not going out there without enough water but if uh, if you happen to be hiking in a place that has water sources like um, a good stream or a river um, if you feel comfortable at that water source, uh, something you could do is bring along a water filter uh, or purification option. Um, if you're always going to be close to that water, you can refill your Nalgene's and, and water bladders while you're there with a filter. Uh, that way you don't have to carry the weight of all of the water for your whole day if, uh, if you're going to be out there for longer periods of time. Something like that can be beneficial so that you're not having to carry that weight all day long. Heather, really quickly, can you briefly now talk about cleaning bladders and then we can revisit that at the end, but just really quick, that was a question. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, so water bladders, uh, when you are cleaning them, there are some little tabs you can get that um, you dump in there with some water and they kind of dissolve and clean the inside. Um, a good thing that I like to do when I get home and I'm cleaning that gear is I make sure that the inside of that water bladder is as dry as possible. And if I can't get it dry right away, I put it in the freezer so that the freezer will freeze any water that's in there and any potential bacteria so that no mold forms in there. Um, if you do have mold, you can always put just a drop of bleach in there to clean it too. And Camelbacks also have a lifetime warranty. So if something were to go terribly wrong with that, you can uh, send it into Camelback and uh, they might be able to help you out with that. Just one more additional note. It's not the most technical, but my husband will also ball up a bunch of paper towel and kind of shove it in there. So it props the uh, bladder open and it also absorbs the water and then he'll just let it hang out for a couple of days before we put it back in the gear closet. So once you get that tablet in there and you clean it, make sure there's no bacteria or anything. Those are a couple different ways of getting it dry. Yeah. Also, um, I, a good rule of thumb for me is only put water in your water bladders. Don't put Gatorade or a noon tablet or any electrolytes. Anything that has that sugar in it uh, can drastically improve your chances of get, getting mold in there later. So be, be mindful and just only use water. Awesome. Great points all around and some really great questions. 
Uh, there, there's me in need of a break. And um, I just, I love to emphasize that you should be having fun when you're hiking. And if you're a new hiker and you're feeling frustrated, are, are you just overdoing it? You know, that's a really big problem. You don't want to overdo it. And if you're bringing folks that you want to show them a good time, you know, don't be a bully and keep the pace so high that everybody just gets burned out. Uh, that's my lovely wife sitting with her feet in a little stream in Colorado. And, you know, just taking time to enjoy the day um, is just so critical. Um, you can get really hot really quickly where we're living and all over, all, anywhere you're at. Um, so just staying cool is important too. Um, one of my favorite tips for beginner hikers, and this has taken me literally around the world. It's one of my proven methods of staying happy on a hike is to begin your hike and hike for 30 minutes or 15 minutes or 20 minutes or whatever it is. I usually do about 30 and then stop, take off your pack, retie your shoes, clean your sunglasses, just reset everything. In that first little bit of a hike, in that first 30 minutes, you're going to know what needs adjusting. And if you ignore those things until the first hour, the second hour, you know, you run the risk of having some, some bigger problems, some more inconvenient problems, let's say, of, like blisters and things like that, and just wearing the wrong way. So just take a break and take some time to pause, look at the scenery, and don't overdo it. Um, again, just loosen all the straps. Start from a neutral point when you put your backpack on and adjust it to fit every time, and that way you're not just kind of tightening from where you left off with it, and that way, you know, prevent it from being too tight. Uh, you know, use your layers. Don't forget to prevent getting too cold or too hot during a break. You know, obviously, we'll rest in the shade. Um, and if you have lots and lots of time, take your shoes off, put up the hammock, take a real break. That's, that's always fun. Um, so that's just a quick section on that. Uh, next, I want to talk a little bit about navigation. There are a million um, YouTube videos on how to read a compass, and we love to sell uh, compasses and things like that. But you don't need a compass to, to navigate in the wild. What you really need is a map of, from the local area or a map of the local area. You can probably download that on your phone sometimes. You can, you can find, like, our wonderful Texas State Parks provide maps. Um, there's lots of websites that have maps for your local area. Um, your city will have maps of all the city parks and things like that. Um, and study that before you go. Know, know, the, know where you are in relation to the trail. Uh, establish landmarks when you get there. You know, make sure that you know how to group the family back at a single point if somebody gets split up. Like this here, along this trail, this is a great landmark, this little rock cave with the water dripping off of, you know, anybody can see that and say, okay, I walked past that. I know how to get back to there. That's where we should meet up. Heaven forbid, you know, we get split up or something like that. Um, we're not going to cover any, you know, drastic, crazy, you know, navigation nightmares, um, but uh, that's, not, that's not hiking 101, that's later. But really just being mindful and not counting on your GPS phone and just making sure everybody knows uh, what the plan is and where you are. That's just a really important part of having the confidence to go hiking as a newer hiker, um, knowing knowing where you are gives you a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of power. Uh, next, we're going to move on to my favorite snacks. Go, Heather. All right. So, um, if you're out there for any extended period of time, you are probably bringing some snacks. That's definitely my favorite part of a hike. Is uh, having some sort of goodie to bring along. It definitely helps boost morale, like Sean was mentioning on your breaks. So um, some things that you wanna remember is uh, to leave no trace. Uh, that includes packing out your trash. So if you're gonna bring something that has packaging, whether it's a um, RX nut butter or a power bar, you definitely wanna bring like a little Ziploc or something with you. Um, I like to bring a gallon Ziploc with me on my hikes and pick up any trash that maybe I find, whether it's a cigarette bud or a Band-Aid, uh, it's good to leave it better than you found it. So uh, making sure that you're not just tossing things willy-nilly just because it's, you know, the outdoors. Uh, that also means that you could bring things along that yield less trash, things like oranges or bananas, um, and trail mix and things that maybe don't have packaging. But just because some of those things are biodegradable doesn't mean you should just leave them on the trail or throw them out into uh, the wilderness. Uh, that can attract, uh, but not just bugs, but um, wildlife. And you don't really wanna keep all, all that right next to the trail, depending on where you are and how dangerous that might end up being. 
but it also uh, takes a long time for those things to biodegrade and it doesn't really work if it's just on the topsoil. You usually have to bury that stuff. So um, making sure you're taking out your food scraps is really important. And um, you know, depending on how long you're out there, you definitely wanna make sure that you're replenishing your calories as well. So maybe some things with um, higher calorie to weight ratios, jerky is really good, tuna packets, uh, just knowing how many calories you're going to need when you're out there. Next is trail etiquette. Um, so this is really important, especially for new hikers who maybe don't know uh, the ins and outs. Um, some really important things to remember is to really be mindful of your fellow hikers. So um, that includes stuff like bringing headphones if you're going to be listening to music. But if you do that, make sure that you're still aware of your surroundings. You want to be cautious in case maybe there's mountain bikers on your trail or just other groups. You want to make sure you know if they're coming, you know, they might yell out from behind and you want to be able to hear them if you've, you know, got your headphones in. So keep your volume down. But that also goes for your voice. You know, maybe don't yell across a huge group of people. Uh, you're there to enjoy nature. So just uh, enjoy your nature. Some things for the trail that you want to make sure you're aware of is um, hiking single file and staying on the trail uh, whenever you're passing. Uh, this helps reduce erosion and it kind of goes into that leave no trace. You want to make sure you're traveling on durable surfaces versus disrupting the flora and fauna off of trail. And um, a good thing to remember is that hikers going uphill have the right of way. It takes a lot more energy to stop for hikers to pass when you're going up the trail than it does going down. You might realize that when you come down from your trail, you can, you know, break your uh, set, sorry. When you come down from a trail, you're probably gonna do it faster. It takes less energy to go down if, if you're you know, changing elevation than it does to go up. So if you're passing somebody on the trail, just remember if you're headed down, you need to be taking the stops to let people pass. And now Sean, I think is gonna talk a little bit more about safety. Well, Sean, you're muted. Yeah. So I do want to talk about safety. Uh, that is a really great picture of my wonderful wife. Uh, and she is signing us into the trail log. And this is a trail log that uh, is just a really uh, basic part of trail safety. And that's making sure someone knows where you are at all times and when you're supposed to come back. Uh, that's also important for inner city trails. And, you know, just text a friend. Say you're going on a trail. Tell them when you're going to be back. You know, let somebody know where you are. And that's just is about awareness. Um, you also um, want to be uh, mindful that you have a first aid kit with you. Even a short trail, um, you know, there'll be times when you never use it, and that's great. But to have an assortment of, of medicines and Band-Aids and emergency tools at your disposal is really critical when you're hiking. And especially if you're camping, that's another, another story altogether. But you want to be safe and make sure that you're prepared for uh, emergencies. Uh, and then major first aid in the backcountry is really simple you need to call uh, 911. And um, you know the park rangers will always tell you to call 911 first. Um, that's probably not true 100% of the time in certain backcountry places in the world, but um, you know, learn the local, uh, the local rules for how to ask for help and, and what, what happens. Just be prepared for, for that. Just have it in your mind. But we think most of you are going to have an easy going time. That's a picture of a bear uh, that Shannon saw out in the wild. And I've been lucky enough to see bears in the wild and it is wonderful and amazing and your heart just gets pumping so fast. Um, but you need to keep your distance. Um, a lot of big parks have the big animals like Yellowstone, you know, has, has all those big animals. And if you're going somewhere like that, you need to research what to do when you're around those animals, how far you need to stay away. A good rule literally of thumb is if you can hold your thumb up and cover up the animal, that's good. If, you're, if the animal is bigger than your thumb, that means you're way too close and you need to back up, uh, I would say, slowly. Um, so if you have more questions about how to stay safe in the wild, we would love to answer those during the Q&A because next we are going to go into caring for your gear.
Yeah, so when you get home, uh, you definitely want to take stock of everything that you've used. Maybe it's out of your uh, first aid kit. Uh, and you want to just replenish anything that maybe you used. Maybe it was a blister patch or you've got your sets, um, set of gear over here and you know maybe you went through some stuff. So you definitely want to clean an inventory. The biggest thing is is making sure that everything is dry, whether that's your boots, uh, maybe you stepped in a creek and your boots are totally soaked on the inside. Uh, it's really important to leave those out to dry uh, before you use them again and making sure that they're dry so that they're not going to, you know, attract any mold as well. And that kind of goes with the water bladders, uh, but that, that could totally happen if you pack away muddy, disgusting, gross boots in the back of your closet or something. So yeah. just be aware of that. Um, also, a good thing for muddy shoes and stuff, you want to clean off all of that debris and dirt. Uh, you can use a nice little brush or old toothbrush and just kind of give it a good clean. You've invested in this gear, so you want to take care of it. So you definitely want to make sure that you're not just throwing things into the closet. And um, having a dedicated storage space for your gear is really important. I like to have a whole gear closet so I know exactly where to go when I'm picking stuff out for my trip. Um, but something to uh, remember is where you live, you might want to avoid storing it in places like the attic, the garage, or even in your car for extended periods of time. Uh, depending on where you live, the excessive summertime heat could maybe damage some of your gear, like your rain jacket or uh, waterproof seam somewhere. So just being, you know, keeping it in a cool, dry place is really important. Can I shout out our office's gear library? That's that picture there. Uh, yeah. our, our company, all the stores have access to this great library of gear to check out for their personal trips. And it's just been a really great pro program to test out gear. And the, um, one of the buying team guys takes really great care of it. And this is a great example of how organized all of our gear should be. I uh, won't lie and say that mine is looking like that right now, but uh, that's the goal. So um, a great uh, shout out to Rainin, our, uh, our gear library manager. Thank you, Rainin. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, we are going to move into our gear demo and uh, make sure you have the outline and some Q&A. And then I also wanted to uh, let everybody know that we have a uh, contest. Uh, well, actually, Shannon, why don't you talk about this? Yeah, so um, we have a North Face giveaway going on right now on our Facebook page and our Instagram page. You can find us on social media on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Whole Earth Prov. So uh, feel free to go over there, get entered to win. We're going to be giving away three North Face backpacks in total. So you have an opportunity on Facebook if that's where you're at or on Instagram if that's where you're at. Um, and we are going to keep recording up through this gear demo that we're going to go through real quick with you guys. And then uh, when we turn it over to Q&A, we'll uh, end the recording so you guys can come on and ask your questions. I put that social handle in the chat for you guys as well. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Go ahead, Heather. All right. So, uh, Back to shoes, some differences and things that you might want to know about. Really fast, sorry, I forgot to mention, guys, if you want to go back on your, um, the view for, to, um, I guess it's, is it gallery view now? So that you can see more up close what Heather is talking about. Oh, yeah, Sean, maybe you just need to stop presenting. Yes. And there. then if you hit that button at the top right that says speaker view, that's going to make whoever's talking nice and big so you can see what we're talking about. Okay, sorry. Go ahead, Heather. Oh, you're good. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so footwear. Yeah. Like Shannon said, um, depending on what your hike is and what you're comfortable with will determine, you know, what level of shoe you're going to take with you. You might not need something as serious as this, depending on where you're going, but maybe you do. This is a shoe that has a really stiff sole. This is from Obos and, um, we sell the men's version of this in our stores. This is really burly. It's going to have a mid to high top ankle support. So that's really helpful for your Achilles and your ankle to keep you from uh, having any stability issues and a really rigid, aggressive outsole as well. There's still dirt in this from my last trip. 
uh, I didn't clean this when I got back. <laughs> so um, definitely important and helpful. Uh, you know, if you have really sore feet, maybe you need something more robust that can really protect you from the rocks and stuff. And maybe not, maybe you can deal with just a simple pair of trail runners. Um, I like to put super feet in mine for extra arch support and that's super helpful when you're hiking. Um, but yeah, these are a little bit more flexible, but you might feel more rocks underneath your feet, but you have a little bit more agility in these and they're lighter, you can go a little faster. In these. Or like Shannon said, um, a good pair of Chacos, these are also totally fine to hike in, so really important. And in your first aid kit or just in your regular um, hike, you might really wanna bring along a blister kit. These are really, really helpful, especially when you're starting out. Um, I've gotten plenty of blisters, especially with a brand new shoe. Even if I'm experienced with hiking, when you get a new shoe, you have to break it in. And sometimes that means that you figure out if you get blisters and where those are and where those hot spots are. Um, I also like to bring along a teeny tiny little thing of Vaseline to put on those blisters. Uh, this is always in my first aid kit. And when it comes to socks, I prefer wool. I really like Darn Tufts and Smart Wool, uh, but I also use Injinjis, and those are toe socks, and those really help cut down my blisters for me because I usually get them between my toes. So that is a pro tip. Toe socks are totally in when it comes to hiking. All right, and then Sean's gonna talk about day pads. Yeah, so you've seen it in the pictures. The eagle-eyed folks will have seen my orange Osp Osprey Daylight Plus. This is my go-to backpack. Uh, I wanna say it's 15 liters, something like that. And I just wanna show you this little pouch here. Just, I slide my water bladder in, and then the shoulder strap has a little gear loop. And I feed the, the bladder uh, hose through that. And you just kind of bite down and drink and it's super easy these little things can be cleaned and taken apart which is nice um, and like Heather said you just keep it dry as much as you can um, you know I always also have my hammock in my backpack and there's definitely some pictures of uh, me and my hammock on our Instagram all over the place and yeah just backpack questions especially hit me up in the chat if you have any questions um, I think Comfort is a big part of it, and really they should call it, uh, you know, you know, it's really more about the pack than the back. You know what I mean? Just and a good a good backpack is going to treat you right and be your friend for a long, long time. And I don't think you need to have um, as many backpacks as I do, but it is fun hobby to get into because they're always changing and adding features. Um, but I've had this one for over five years, and it's still kicking, and it goes with us all over the place. So to parlay off of that, I'm also going to mention, ladies, we do have women's yeah, this, pack. Yeah. This is my wife's pack, and this is a women's version of the pack. The torso length is different, and the way the straps are composed are different as well. They have different uh, ratios. We, I am about to actually head to the San Juan Mountains um, shortly, and so I actually finally bought myself a new pack, and I did buy a women's specific pack. Um, just to go off of what Sean is saying, I'm really stoked about it. It's this Osprey Tempest 20, so it's a 20 liter pack. It doesn't come with a hydration bladder, but I, I already have one, so it worked out. Um, and one of the things that I was really stoked on this pack was that it has a spot to stow your trekking poles here down at the bottom and here um, on this uh, strap here. And another thing that makes it women specific, if you have a chest and you've ever tried to wear a pack that has a chest clip and it just cuts you right across the middle, it's really uncomfortable. So these packs do, they're a little bit more tailored to a lady's body um, and the hip belt is a little bit more tailored to a woman's body. Um, Y'all can see this luxurious hip belt that I'm stoked to wear. Um, and then in addition to that, I am also really excited to use these uh, black diamond trekking poles that I just got. These are telescoping poles. There's a couple different types of poles that you can get if you need a little bit more stability, um, if you know you're gonna be going um, up and down elevation and you're just, or doing a lot of water crossings and you're gonna want a little bit more support um, throughout your hike, a trekking pole is a great option. You can go with two, you can go with one. Um, there are telescoping uh, trekking poles and then Heather is gonna show you guys a folding trekking pole here in a second. But essentially a telescoping just means that you can unclip it, 
make it the right height for you, which is about a 90 degree angle with your arm, and then it's ready to go. Um, these black diamond ones are pretty awesome. Uh, they fold up nice and tight, um, really easy to use, and they have some shock absorption. I believe these are going to be in the collection. Oh, the collection. Heather, did you share that? <laughs> I did. Yeah, okay, cool. I totally forgot about that, guys. Uh, we have a custom collection that we made on our website uh, that is specific to this webinar and specific to hiking that has some of our favorite items in it. So Sean and Heather and myself curated that for you guys so that y'all can go and check it out. It's going to have some of the best hits. Um, and these are in there. These are actually women-specific uh, trekking poles as well. So, yeah. I'll, I'll put that in the chat one more time for all you guys. Um, so the other version of trekking poles is these uh, collapsible or folding versions. These are a little bit better if, say, you're going to travel on a plane. These you can actually get small enough to put in your carry-on luggage. The other ones that Shannon have, uh, has uh, do not work well for that. You'd have to take them in your checked luggage. So if you're you know, going somewhere far away for a nice hike uh, and really want to bring those along, uh, these are going to be a little bit more friendly for that. And they just kind of snap together. And they do have a little bit less adjusting power here. You can really um, only adjust this piece and then piece versus hers has three adjustments this one only has two but um these are excellent i have both kinds uh the kind that shannon has sometimes feels a little bit more stable but i also really love these because they're lighter weight and this is also women specific but we i think we have some men's and women specific ones in the collection but just because they're men's or women's doesn't mean that you have to get it if you're a woman you can totally get the men's version it's uh not that much different it's mostly about the grip that you're holding on to so, uh, and, uh, go ahead. Oh, so the next thing you want to be aware of is your sun protection. I always like to bring a, a wider brimmed hat. And if I'm not bringing this, uh, sometimes I bring a hat that kind of has what's called a cape. And that way I don't have to wear nearly as much sunscreen and it really protects your skin from the sun's harmful rays. I'm also a fan of wearing, um, if it's really hot out, I'll wear a short sleeve shirt but I'll bring along these um, sleeves for your arms and these have um, an ice cooling effect so when the wind blows on these you actually feel a little chilly and it's really nice and it protects you from the sun so I really like wearing those or just long sleeve shirts as well and pants even though it can be hot it's better to protect yourself from the sun and a good buff is my best friend always a good thing to do you can also dip this in the creek, when, wherever you're passing, and put it on your neck, it keeps you a little cool. And uh, a good pair of sunglasses is also super handy. So I am really quickly gonna go through uh, those layers that we were talking about, you guys. So depending on the season, if uh, you know, you're going somewhere where it's, it dips in the evening and it's cold in the morning, you're definitely gonna wanna have some layers. Um, we sell a number of different base layers. Uh, Smart wool being a huge one, definitely merino wool. They come in all different kinds of weights. You think wool, you think heavy. There's actually some really, really super thin merino wool. And the reason merino is great is because it does a, a natural, um, it wicks moisture away from you um, just by the way the filament of that hair is. Merino wool is a different type of wool than your average oil wool. But beyond that, it has a natural antimicrobial feature, so it's not gonna stink. So if you're gonna be out and you're gonna wanna wear the same base layer and you're not gonna do laundry for a week, I definitely would recommend merino wool. But if you're just looking for something kind of um, quick and easy to get into as well, um, Kapaline, uh, Patagonia Kapaline is an excellent option. I have one of my base layers here that I love to wear. Um, this is a synthetic. So if you are gonna be wearing it for multiple, multiple days, it might not smell the best by the end of it. Um, but they are nice and lightweight. They do dry super fast. Merino wool does as well. This is going to be a little bit more entry level price point. Also comes in different weights. So cap one, cap two, cap three, cap four. Um, there are different levels um, depending on how thick you need your base layer to be. And of course they make tops and bottoms. Um, and now they even have base layers that are short sleeve. Like Heather was saying, you can get a short sleeve option. You can get a long sleeve option. Um, and then depending on where you're going, you know, you might want to wear your base layer and the t-shirt over that and then kind of switch, you know, switch them throughout the day or however you want that to work. 
I'm usually like if we're going to the mountains, my usual um, get up in the morning, I like to hike in t-shirts. It's just what I do. So if I'm wearing a base layer, I'll usually put it on under the t-shirt and I'll just like take it off later on in the day and put my t-shirt back on. But usually when we go to the mountains, it's pretty chilly in the morning when we get early starts. So I will wear a base layer. I'll wear whatever t-shirt I'm going to wear that day. I usually am wearing some level of a Patagonia synthetic um, jacket. Synthetic versus down. Um, synthetic is going to keep you warmer when it's wet. It's a little bit lighter too. Usually this kind of level of down, this is um, a nano puff. It's just not as thick as your typical like 800 fill down jacket. So this is going to be a little bit more versatile. It's going to breathe a little bit more. Um, this is also super easy to layer with stuff. You can see it's like a super silky thin sleeping bag. So um, this is a staple for me on the trail, this Patagonia jacket. They also pack down into their pockets, um, similar to a lot of rain jackets. So um, if you want to pack it down into a, um, into its pocket and stick it into your pack quickly and easily, you can do that. I would also highly recommend um, this mount, or well, not this one, I don't think we sell this one, <laughs> but I would also highly recommend some sort of really light, like, I guess you could call it a windbreaker or a shell essentially um, is what we call it, but something kind of really light and malleable and flexible like we were talking about. This is super great. This is actually what I wear when we do summit hikes um up at the top because it protects from sun it's a, just a really simple nylon so you know it's it doesn't cut a whole lot of wind in actuality but um it protects from sun it does its job in terms of keeping you warm um and it just it doesn't overheat it's a great kind of mid um layer and then i also of course can't get by without showing a rain jacket you need a rain jacket all the time whether you're in texas or you know depending on wherever you are um you're gonna need some sort of uh, shell, outer shell. There are a ton of options. Um, I grabbed my husband's cool rain jacket, which cool brand is amazing. If you guys are not familiar, it's, um, it's one of my favorite brands. It's a staple in our store for sure. Uh, but really you can't go wrong with anything. Marmot makes a really great entry level precip, uh, which stands for precipitation. Um, and that also packs down into its shell. Um, getting yourself a good rain jacket is in my opinion, similar to getting a good pair of, of shoes, boots, whatever. Um, you're going to use it over and over again, especially if you're heading to the mountains. It also serves as a really great, like if you don't want to find like a nylon silky something or other, you could totally wear a rain jacket at the summit when it gets kind of cold if you're sitting having lunch or whatever. It does a great job of cutting wind, so it'll keep you as warm as you really need to be until you get moving again. Um, but yeah, so basic layering system, base layer. Whatever shirt you want to wear, if you want to wear a shirt in addition to that, um, some sort of insulating layer, whether it's a synthetic uh, down piece or actual down, um, and then some sort of shell. You want uh, a lot of down items are not waterproof. In fact, very few of them are waterproof. So you're going to want to make sure that you protect your clothing from getting wet and then staying wet or having to be wet for any amount of time while it's drying. Um, so it's kind of a three part deal. Um, and there are tons of options in between there. We're getting into the season where we're, our store is going to be carrying a ton of that stuff. So again, in Q&A, if y'all have more questions about that, we're happy to answer questions about specific items as well. Here's uh, one of those shells packed into its little pocket. These pieces here are the seam taped, uh, but th this is one from Patagonia. It packs super small. It's... Yeah, open it up. Oh yeah? Yeah. So this is a great little thing to throw in your day pack, you know, especially if Maybe you didn't plan ahead and you don't know what the weather's going to be like. This is a super light, simple one. And it just comes out of its pocket. You just turn it inside out. I also have that marmot one, and that one's great too. Um, and yeah, it's just super thin and easy. And I, I take this with me everywhere. I'm going somewhere this weekend, and this is coming with me. And uh, the last piece of gear we wanted to talk about were stuff sacks. And this is an example of a stuff sack. It's a uh, sill nylon material, so it's kind of uh, real thin and lightweight, and it slides in your backpack and keeps things organized. And I have these in so many different shapes. This one has been around the world with me, and it's from 2008. And, you know, I'm never going to get rid of it, and it's going to keep my stuff organized in my backpack for as long as I can uh, keep from losing it. Uh, and then we started thinking, 
gee, that's kind of getting into backpacking. And we wanted to take this time to tease next month's Backpacking 101. Stay tuned to our Instagram, Facebook accounts for tips on uh, doing some backcountry overnight trips. Uh, it's a little bit more specialized than just a day hike, but it is a lot of fun and it's a great way to, uh, to see some parts of your favorite parks that you don't otherwise get to see. So I think on that note, are we ready friends to begin the Q&A? And we have some questions in the trail. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the recording now and we can get to that part. All right.